So uh, good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all on behalf of Pfizer Pune Optics League in uh, this today's Friday seminar. Today we have with us uh, Professor Anindo Das from uh, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, uh, to give a brief uh, introduction of Dr. Das. He obtained his uh, MS and PhD in Physics from ISC Bangalore uh, in 2004 and 9, respectively. He then joined as a postdoctoral fellow at the Weizmann Institute of Science, Israel. Uh, he worked there from 2009 to 2013. After that, he joined the Department of Physics IISC as an assistant professor. And uh, since 2009, he is an assistant associate professor over there in the Department of Physics. Dr. Dash's research area is on quantum transport properties of mesoscopic structures in reduced dimensions like 2D graphene, 2D transition metal dichalcogenides, topological insulators, and one-dimensional nanowires. Professor Das has also received the prestigious Shonojanti Fellowship from Department of Science and Technology, DST, in the year 2019. So with this brief introduction, I would like to invite Professor Anindo Das to uh, please start the today's talk. Thank you. Once again, let me share my screen. Ramagno, are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes. Could I minimize this? Okay, excellent. Okay, thank you, Ramagno, uh, for inviting me to. Uh, uh, to give a talk, uh, so I realized that this is this of the the, the 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 most of uh, audience would be from student background as well as some expert also. So I try to keep this talk uh, 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 sort of you know uh, to give a uh, background of the system and uh, very basic level and. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, so the, today what I want to talk about, this is something we have been working during this COVID time. In fact, we started this making device during the, I think, peak of second wave and around that time, maybe, uh, you know, sort of uh, maybe before just uh, second wave of COVID and uh, then started measurement after that, around that time. So, so the title of, as my title suggests, it's magic land of magic angle twisted bilography. So as I go forward, you will, I'll try to explain wh what is this magic la land and I'll be talking about. And students and any I mean, expert, please, and um, faculty will request, if you have any questions, please interact me. I'll be very happy to, you know, uh, to discuss. And, uh, and, uh, and if you have any comment and suggestion, please give me. Uh, and those will be really, I'm looking forward to those things. So before I go to the today's topic, so this is our group and uh, the side, uh, quantum transport lab at IAC. Uh, as you, the picture suggests, as you see this back, the, uh, you know, I have some, uh, I'm fortunate to have this hardworking students. And uh, this is the main measurement set of what I have here at IAC, which is a 10 millikelvin and 10 Tesla system. So all this measurement, the major measurement I'll be talking today. So those are done in using this system. So the research area, what we have been working for last six to seven years, these are the main uh, three fields we have been working. And one of them is uh, this thermal transport in graphene quantum hall. So this is something we have been working for uh, last uh, three to four years. And there are lots of things happening around this, this, this area. Uh, 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 you know, this thermal transport for different kinds of particles. And uh, we are, I mean, uh, although the holy grail is we want to look for this Majorana mode in this kind of systems. And this is something is going on very well, I should tell. And uh, we are sort of pioneer this field in at least graphene community, thermal transport. In fact, today's measurement, what I'm going to talk about, the technology what we build up for this measurement, this technology we are used for this kind of uh, this thing. Topic which is one of the heart of my sort of my, my research area, which is the 
proximity superconductivity or mesoscopic superconductivity uh, and particularly again uh, graphene and superconducting interface there again we do like normal transport measurement like you know resistance kind of measurement as well as some kind of quantum noise uh, to study like you know charge and all other dynamics and so on at these interfaces so this is something also is our uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, field we uh, we are going ahead and uh, so recently what we uh, also another field we started is called coulomb drag so in this kind of experiment what we have uh, done uh, in fact uh, we have first time demonstrated the coulomb drag between dimensionally mismatched structures like one was like a nanoware which is 1d and another was a graphene and they are separated by a uh, in the boronited insulator and we try to see the coulomb drag so basically in a coulomb drag what you do you drive a current in one layer and because of the electronic interactions it drag the it flows the current in another layer so there are many mechanism or the, what is the source of this drag debate and this because of this dimensionally mismatch system we could actually answer some of this uh, unsolved problem in this area so the today's uh, this uh, regarding this magic angle twisted binary graphene uh, um, was tamagno uh, everything is okay right you are able to hear me and my slides are moving right yeah, yes sir so everything is fine excellent so this was done uh, due to these four hard working guys um, aruf who has recently submitted thesis and uh, going for postdoc to wiseman and uh, these are the new kids who joined very recently and i am really fortunate to have this uh, highly uh, motivated and uh, hard working students and uh, this was done with because, because this field was completely new to me and lots of discussion and sort of you know uh, with this my theory colleague subroto and sumilon and uh, adeep uh, uh, you know for such a long time almost like uh, almost like a one year continuous discussion and whatever actually i learned i will try to present in today's meeting uh, and of course uh, uh, one of the ingredient is to make this good devices is as you, you might have felt that boron nitrate is one of the important material for my lab hexagonal boron nitrate and those were provided by my collaborator from nims so what the plan the way i have planned this as follows so i'll briefly uh, introduce uh, not actually a little bit elaborative way uh, what is this magic angle of this twisted binary graphene and why it is important and then followed by i'll try to discuss what are the experiment thing has been done so far and where this field stands and uh, after that i'll switch to you know uh, our measurement which is a thermopower technique which we have used to unravel some of the interesting uh, 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 structure or interesting physics of this thing and uh, uh, followed by so basically i'll try to cover these three topics but i'm not sure what uh, the last two topic will be able to capture but this first one which i'll try to finish so this is what we have seen uh, our thermopower measurement some interaction given quantum phase transition is basically on uh, 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 we have uh, discovered we have seen by this thermopower measurement also we see some interesting physics of uh, correlation physics which you are supposed to see in this kind of a magic angle sample and i'll uh, so that, that there are some signature is there also in thermopower and as probably you know this therm this magic angle superconductivity we see very anomalous response of thermopower around this superconducting transition and that's something related to we see some signature of uh, some you know uh, you know some sort of superconducting fluctuation in the system okay so let's start this uh, field so before i go to twisted bilayer graphene graphene i guess every everyone knows about this graphene in this uh, audience the graphene as you know is a single sheet of carbon atoms where the carbons are arranged in a honeycomb lattice and in fact the band structure was you know it was predicted in 1946 such a long ago although it was discovered only in 2004 because of these two gentlemen i mean that that's a pioneering discovery i would say or that discovery with because of that i am at least many of us were surviving so far in this community so they could show that such a you, you know such a simple technique 
that by exfoliation using a scotch tape, you can make a two dimensional system, you know, single layer of uh, sheet of graphene. And that's a, such a dramatic discovery that, you know, it has changed this conventional physics community and this field. And because of that, many 2D material emerge, both, you know, solid uh, transport as well as optic physics has, you know, exponentially grown after this discovery. Because you remember before this graphene was discovered, any experiment you want to do in two dimensional electron gas, you need a CE, you know, it's, a mole it's called molecular beam epitaxy, which is a cost like a few tens of crore. And that kind of support, only very few institutes in the world, you know, uh, uh, for example, in my, when I, where I did a postdoc in Professor Moti Evans' group, they are having this kind of system, but it's very rare, you know, to have those kind of uh, things. So to me, you know, uh, <laughs> because of them only I'm surviving. That's the I think, main message I should tell. So what is the physics about that? Because of this honeycomb lattice, if you uh, if you know the real space is honeycomb as well as the Brillouin is, uh, uh, you know, the reciprocal space also is a honeycomb structure. The most important thing is the dispersion at this Dirac point. And the dispersion we know is a linear dispersion. And because of this linearity of this dispersion, you know, you can describe basically relativistic Dirac formulas and many, many interesting physics emerge in that way. So I will go to details, all these details, uh, whatever has been, but you know how this is, uh, has been, how prolific over the years. But the important thing I want to say, uh, where the twisted, um, being how the connection between graphene and twisted is following. Graphene, only we talk about this low energy physics, which is the linear dispersion, what I have been telling. But if you look at the full band structure of graphene, there are many interesting actually structure, as you can see, but the, what you see here, this is called the dispersion reciprocal space. So the so you see here, these are the your uh, K, K points and the Y axis, your energy axis. So around the K points, you have the linear dispersion, but not only that, as you go far away, there are saddle points and there are many structures and very, very interesting band structure exist even in graphene. But the point is, question you can ask, can I reach those points? That's the question. Can I study those points, these interesting points? Answer is no. Why? Because to, you know, to, so usually if you, um, if you have an intrinsic graphene, the Fermi energy at the Dirac point, which means here, you know, at this, this, this single point. But to drop the sand, to study this, for example, the saddle point or fan of singularity, you have to drop the system. Or, or in other words, you have to fill this you know, band completely. To, to fill this band completely for graphene, you need at least the four, you know, you probably know solid state physics uh, course, you have to drop this power unit cell by the four electrons because there are two spin and two valid degeneracy. So if you, if you do four electrons per unit cell uh, in a real space actually, so you need to uh, do by four electrons per unit cell, then only you can fill the band completely. Now you can try to calculate what that, that correspond to my density. You know, I, I can easily do because I can do the size of this uh, unit cell because you should precisely know, and I'm talking about four electrons. So I can something write in terms of density and that comes about 10 to the 15 per centimeter square. And this is enormous because this is quite large because in typically in laboratory, like using a, uh, a silicon dioxide back gate or even a chemical doping, you can go at most 10 to the power 12 to 10 to the power 30. You cannot go beyond that. So as you can see, because of this, you cannot feel the band completely. And as a result, you cannot see very interesting physics, which were probably near the band days or the, near, or the middle of the band happening. So graphene, you cannot do that, even though there is an interesting part. So now that is all, you can think of this new system and this new kind artificial, this Moira structure will solve the problem. Now I'll discuss how. So here, as you can see, there are two, so this twisted violet graphene. So what is the twisted violet graphene? So basically you take two layers and you uh, give a relative twist among them, as you can see here in this picture, because of that, as you can see here, because of this relative twist angle, you can see there is a called artificial super lattices form. Yeah. Now, if I give, 
uh, uh, which is called super lattice wavelength, and which will depend, of course, on this angle between these two layer. For example, if the and the relation is like that, you know, it goes as a one by sine theta by two, and A is the lattice constant of graphene. For magic angle, for example, one point one degree, I'll come to the this why this is magic angle. The, for this particular angle, you will see this lambda is a twelve nanometer. So this 12 nanometer is much, much higher than the lattice constant of graphene. The lattice, the, the carbon, the lattice constant of graphene is around, I think, 1.2, I think 1.41 1 angstrom, right? And this is, you see, 120 angstrom, it's quite big. Now, as a result, what will happen? Now you can see that if I look at the reciprocal space now, that's also been modified. So you can think like one of this color, let's say this green color coming from the bottom HB, a eh, bottom graphene, and the red color come from the top graphene. Now they are they have a relative angle. So as a result, your mini the resultant super lattice what you have. This is your mini brillouism. Okay. Now you can see your mini brillouism size is small in the reciprocal space, and real space it is very big size. Now you can ask this band. Now I have a new band structure because of this Moire super lattice. Now you can ask how many electrons do I need? to fulfill this kind of band. Now you can calculate, earlier it was, as I said, four electron, but here is a two layer. So it will come, it will be eight electrons per, uh, per moire in your cell. And uh, so that corresponds to one electron per 10,000 carbon atoms, because your inner cell is quite big now, right? It's a, uh, as you lambda, I'm talking about 12 nanometer. So now it seems if I fill this eight electron per in your cell, which is nothing but one electron per 10,000 carbon atoms, I can feel this new super lattice band. And in fact, that's density, which is correspond to of the order of 10 to the power 12, and which is achievable in the, in the experiment. So that is one of the important, to me as an experimentalist is very important, that this is to me very, I mean, sort of appealing that, you know, uh, even though the, the even single layer graphene, there is an interesting thing you can do, but you cannot achieve that. But twisted binary, that by you know by making this angle and this moire new uh, kind of uh, band structure, you can uh, you can easily drop the system such a way you can achieve uh, you, you can you can study the full band. Now the next question is okay, this doesn't tell me why there's any very angle specific. I mean it can be one point one or it can be one point five degree. You know it's not uh, very angle something. You know it's not telling you something any, uh, whether the angle is very important, okay? So that brings to me this magic angle, which you probably heard of uh, in the in literature that, uh, uh, which is 1.07 degree is magic angle. So why this is magic angle? You can ask why this is magic angle. So let's try to understand. So as I was talking about these two Brillua zone of your intrinsic graphene, they are now shifted because of this twist angle. If I look at the dispersive dispersion, you know, in a EK diagram, so here e, uh, y axis is the energy and your x axis is the your momentum axis. Now you can see this there are these two deduct cone from the two layer, uh, one from the uh, top one, another is bottom one, they are shifted, right? Because of this angle. And you can, in fact, you can calculate this shift will be nothing but 2 pi by a because this is uh, your uh, reciprocal lattice vector which is two pi by a times theta. So this mismatch of this momentum is nothing but two pi by into theta. So far so good. So the direct crossing point at this energy, you can, because we know that the relation for graphene is a linear dispersion. So it's proportional to momentum. So the crossing point of this crossing point, this two crossing point is nothing but h cross uh, the, the Fermi velocity uh, and this number, two pi by a into theta, which is nothing but 16, theta into EV. Now, this physics, what I say, if there is no, you know, there is no tunneling between the layer or there is no interaction or no hybridization between the layer. But indeed, you know, in real physics, we know once you like do like that, there will be tunneling between top to bottom graphene, right? So that this, this struct, this band structure, now what of electron at this energy, they will try to, you know, uh, hybridize. And we know that if the hybrid hybridization happen, that will open a gap. Now you can see, you can have a scenario now, if you open a gap now, this band will be, you know, pushed towards, you know, towards the zero energy. And you can see that 
So if you push too much, such that this line becomes almost close to the zero energy, you'll have almost like a flat band. Now we know that this W, the internal tunneling for graphene is very known, and that we know around, G, and in, uh, in fact, this is 0 0.3 EV, the coupling strain. So which means I have to push this band by 0 0.3 EV, which will then this band will be, this line will be completely flat. So basically I have to equate this number to 0 0.3 EV to find what, what will be the theta. So if I do that simple exercise, in fact, that will give me theta is equal to 1.07 degree. So such a crude way, but this gives almost close to, I mean, the, in fact, this is the, I mean, the magic angle 1.07. So uh, having said that, people have done, you know, this field started because of this guy, McDonald, and uh, this paper in PNS 2001, 11. Uh, so they have calculated uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this, you know, uh, the, the energy versus, you know, momentum relations for different angle of this twisted binary system. And what they could see that, you know, if you go to 0 0.5 degree, you see that the system is, you know, the dispersion like this. So you can see with momentum, as I change the momentum, the energy is also changing quite rapidly. Similarly, at two degree, if I change the momentum, so I, I guess you guys know all this gamma k, all these directs, that symmetry points of your Brillouin zone. So if I change along that those directions, you see this energy changes with momentum quite rapidly. However, for 1.05, this paper shows that there is a flat band. You see this innermost, this one, this the energy is almost remain constant with momentum. So it doesn't change. That's the, the theoretically calculated band structure and showing that, you know, that, you know, uh, there is a uh, flat band uh, exist in the particular design. Now that brings to me, okay, that magic angle, I have this flat band important this what should i do with this plan so that brings to me this physics of quantum theory of solid so what we learn our solid state physics that there are two important approach like you know we know you bring the atoms and close by then once you have overlap you know all this uh, uh, you'll you'll uh, create the band and so on and so forth right so here the input, so there the cartoon picture, what you see, you have a some sort of potential well kind of thing. You can think like sort of like a quantum dot or so. So these electrons are confined here, but they can tunnel from this to this. But the term, there are two things. So one is this hopping term, which is T. Another is this interaction term. Because if the two electrons are close by, you have this Coulomb interaction. And solid state, actually, these two interactions determines the properties of solid. Okay, so, so for example, the what we learned like free electron gas or uh, nearly free electron systems that we talk about kind of dispersive band like of in almost like a parabolic dispersion and there we know the interaction energy is much smaller than that your hopping term determines your kinetic energy. And these are the regime we mostly work in most of the metals and systems we are aware, I mean, very familiar with. And these are the systems you can conventional way you can characterize them like Fermi liquid, you have a quasi particle like electronic charge and so on. So, on. However, if you have other regime, for example, like the way flat band I was talking about, which means your dispersion is, is a dispersion less. What does it mean? Your velocity is extremely poor. You don't have actually velocity extremely low. So as it is of what happened, your velocity is extremely low. The, in, you know, the electrons will try to, you know, see each other, you know, so that they inter, the feel, the interaction feeling will be much higher. So as a result, the U for this kind of system is actually the other limit for the flat band. So U by two will be higher than one. And in, in this case, many exotic phases and correlation effect will be, you know, they will sort of uh, 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 dictate the properties of solid. Having said the now, uh, so now the important is this this twisted binary graphene. He, here the twist angle is, is a another treatable parameter which can control this dispersive versus flat band. For example, near the magic angle that the, in the previous plot, the dispersion is almost dispersionless. As you go from that, you know, uh, uh, for magic angle, if you go other angle, like you know, uh, either below or higher, it bears, band becomes dispersed. So you have a complete log to control this parameter and you can have a complete breakdown. So in fact, people have what people have seen that, you know, this kind of flat band, 
the in fact if you look at the so what i am showing here this is the picture you uh, i have shown you so basically what you have here there are two graphene layer on top of each other with a twist angle now so there is a as you probably see in previous there is a stacking is different so in fact there are some places that is called a stacking there are some places called a b stacking because there is angle right so because there is a relative angle so the stackings are different at different place and that's the periodic structure we are talking about that's the superlattice we are talking about now turns out wherever you have the a stacking like you see exactly the two structure on top of each other the electronic the density of state is higher compared to ab structure so you can think this system as like this you know you can think in terms of this uh, the the starting picture i was giving so the basically electrons you can think hopping from this way this other side and uh, so these are the side uh, we are talking about and that's the i'll bring to this famous picture of this kind of mod hubbard model so there you what you can see these are the side basically and this side yeah, it can occupy electrons so in this case i have a degeneracy of the spin so i have can each side can occupy two electron so now you can see this electron if this there are many empty state this electron can now hop from uh, one side to other side but in other regime for example in this regime let's say uh, this is called actually half field of a band and so the uh, so in this case what happens because if i have a two electron each side that is completely field band but if i have each a one electron each side that's called half field of a band and in this case now you can see that if i have to hop between this to this i have to pay this you know interaction this you know this this u term so uh, because of that even though you know uh, so the, the because of that what happened because of this interaction is very high the electron cannot tunnel now so because of that system will be localized okay so this is known as you know mod insulator so this is precisely has been seen now it brings to me experimental review in this kind of system this magic angle uh, twisted by layer so what i am trying to show you here this is your energy versus density of state for here and uh, this is for uh, uh, your conduction band and this is your valency band uh, uh, so these are the two flat band we are talking about and which is uh, a, a very small energy scale in fact this energy scale within 10 mb now what the dramatic thing happen is so this is the uh, this is the famous paper by this pablo's group which uh, you know started this field this magic angle twisted by graphene what they see that when you drop the system from this zero the zero point is at the charge neutrality point but as you see the system you see uh, here which is called the full filling of band that is actually here so you have a gap because you have a other higher band so there is a gap here because there is no state here so that's the reason your conductance goes to zero but interestingly at the half filling which is here at this point you know, here you have the maximum density of state you know the single particle density of state maximum at this point but it turns out conductance goes to zero so this you cannot uh, you know you cannot explain by you know by single particle picture so what is happening in this kind of system so basically you are so in this case not the density of state goes to zero the resistance go uh, that sorry conductance goes to zero because your diffusion is zero and talking in the last slide the electrons are localized because of this half field state so because of this interaction energy you know although they have a density of state but they are not able to move because of this uh, i mean the single particle density of state they are not able to move because of this uh, interaction so that's the reason they see exactly at half field you see uh, so this is one of the main important uh, i think observation in this in this field that half filling you see a resistance in a uh, conductance goes to so not only that followed by they see very interesting you know uh, in the system also the existence of the superconductivity around some feeling and that's very 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 you know very interesting because the density where you see is such a low it's like 10 to the power 11 per centimeter square you will hardly any find material such a low density so the superconductivity okay so this is the fast carbon material to show superconductivity so that is another you know uh, dramatic uh, observation these two that the the, the the conductance goes to zero at this half filling and the superconductivity was 
actually basically started i mean uh, that that was the boost for i would say this field not only that there are many interesting also physics emerge after that for example in terms of topology of this plan plan is so flat in fact you can think like this is like a landau level you know they're like a quantum hall physics quantum hall your bands are completely flat because the kinetic energy completely quenched and you see some sort of like all this you know uh, quantized conductance right so the, all this you know physics of charm number but in this case without magnetic field without magnetic field because the band is so flat that you know that the topology if you calculate all this you know uh, the charm number related physics it gives you this integer uh, values so uh, so basically uh, it has this you know it can show you this quantized conductance and so on and uh, i'll not go to details to see there are there are different symmetries one is called inversion symmetry other is time reversal symmetry and if you can break them and so on and people have seen uh, uh, this uh, signature of charm insulator uh, because of this flatness of this band so this is something uh, so uh, so just to summary so not only that there are many other because i am running out of time so there are many other uh, physics interesting physics for example ferromagnetism so there are two types so the in fact the ferromagnetism coming from the speed as well as the orbital ferromagnetism also has been seen people have seen quantum anomalous hall there is called strain strains metal it's like a, you see this linear resistivity almost tends to zero temperature which is very rare because only above dby temperature uh, you see this linear resistivity uh, for resistance oh, but this is another interesting physics they so there are some paper who claim that this is not uh, the superconductivity not like a singlet superconductivity the it is like a triplet kind of thing there are uh, different various mechanism maybe the fluctuation is the main mechanism for pairing and so on however the main important thing all this speed if he will is this twisted bar bilayer graphene to know really what is the electronic structure because the electronic structure what i was telling this cartoon picture from this you know uh, this mcdonnell theoretical calculus this is lots of assumption and it's not exactly you don't know what is your system has uh, so if you look at the density of it look like this so basically it it has a band of singularity at the middle of the band both conducts and valence band and uh, so that's the continuum model gives you but actually the real structure you want to prove experimentally and you can ask whether this structure is it a rigid structure or non rigid structure what i mean by that non rigid structure say what i mean by that is when i feel you know i have a structure when the, my fermi energy at the zero energy which means when i have not doped the system but when i change my fermi energy is the structure even constant structure evolves it turns out very interesting the electronic structure actually non rigid they actually changes uh, or, or restructure uh, quite dramatically as you uh, as you uh, start filling the carriers so now question is how can you probe uh, uh, this electronic structure excuse me so uh, so one of the way you know the the uh, direct probe is there are uh, these are the two experiment people have done uh, because rps and all is very difficult to probe such a small energy so what has been tried so far these two uh, well established techniques one is called scanning tunneling microscopy which you can directly which is proportional to your density of state so you can uh, directly measure the density of state another is called quantum capacitance measurement or compressibility measurement so that's also a directly proportional density density of state so by these two technique people have started seeing uh, to probe this electronic structure so what is the main result so i will not go to details what is the main result the main result is following what they see is the band actually is very malleable it mean very soft if you change the doping the 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 band structure actually is for example with this cartoon picture i'll try to explain how to change so what you see here this is your energy axis and this is the density of state uh, this is your charge neutrality point this is the your conduction flat band this is the your uh, valence flat band and four different the color is for two di four different flavor two spin and two valence now what happens let's see what happens if you try to dope it if i try to dope it as i shift the fermi energy 
it at the beginning the doping for all the flavors it happen simultaneously or equally but around the critical doping what happens one of the flavor gets completely filled whereas other flavor becomes completely empty so they come back to you know the dirac point again if i repeat again what i was trying to say so uh, so as i dope the system one of them completely fill this band one of the flavor but others become completely empty and this process it even you know, become repetitive as from the between second and third and third and fourth week. so this is known in the literature called stoner like transition and cascade transition so this transition you cannot explain by single particle picture which is the mcdonald calculate that continuum model this you have to calculate the person and people have found if you at hearty fog level you know if you do the calculation the band structure actually stability of the band structure it gives you this kind of transition around this integer field so this is the doping level i was talking about what is this integer filling here so this is your dirac point this is a one electron of a power with this moire unit cell so this corresponds to two electron this is a three electron this is corresponds to four electron of your moire unit cell so if i fill four electron my band is completely filled so as you can see that every integer filling there is a dramatic thing happen and of this called uh, called dirac revival or some sort of cas cas cascaded uh, side of transition uh, or uh, this quantum phase transitions kind of thing happening because of interaction so this is no and if have people ask this question is this physics is the main important ingredient for observing all this you know this beautiful physics called mod insulator or this uh, superconductivity or is it this is the parasite so this nobody knows but but what majority people have seen this signature now that brings to our work why thermopower i want to do this thermopower to study this system okay and i'll convince you this thermopower also can do exactly similar cm in fact it can do better than those technique to find the electronic structure okay so how now let's before i uh, answer this question how it can do let's start what is the thermopower so what is the thermopower what you see here this structure a one this picture that there is a one channel which is connected by uh, 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 a hot reservoir here and there is another uh, uh, cold reservoir here uh, so so basically you have a temperature difference between these two reservoir and you can ask because of this temperature difference what happened obvious answer is because of temperature difference the electron will migrate from one end to the other end right because of the entropy is different so that you the, the, the system will try to you know electron will migrate from one to other end so as a result there will be potential will be developed across this circuit and what you do we basically what you need to know for thermal power so you can ask this current which is proportional to the gradient of chemical voltage and then the temperature and we uh, this thermal power is nothing but this open circuit voltage you measure across the sample which means the open circuit voltage current is zero so that gives you a relation the thermal power or it's called seebeck coefficient nothing but the relation between this delta v the generated voltage divided by the temperature difference okay so this is called the thermal power or seebeck coefficient now you can understand how the seebeck coefficient come from the you know from physics so the seebeck coefficient you know you can learn from your solid state physics so it turns out if you do the sum uh, okay i'm not going to details but uh, as i say you you probably understood there are some two ratio of two term one is called heat current and another is called electrical current okay so this is called the ratio of uh, 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 heat current by electrical current and that gives you the seebeck coefficient and what is the electric heat current and electrical current you can write in terms of this equation the heat current is nothing but you know some density of some uh, number a number and uh, how many number of particles are moving and they are multiplied by their energy right so this is this term so around the chemical potential you have e minus mu this is your density of state and everything is happening around this fermi energy so this is the derivative of fermi energy and this term and uh, this denominator is nothing but your electrical conductivity so this ratio basically dictates or decides what should be your thermal power right now as you can see because of this star 
you know this e minus mu times density of state uh, this integration term it you can immediately feel that you know this is a something odd function what i mean is that if the energy is more than mu then the this number is this 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 is positive quantity if the energy is smaller than mu this is a negative quantity now you can see this one is a positive quantity and negative quantity will cancel each other so which means in my density of state whether if it is symmetric around the mu so this integration will give me because the odd function this will give me a zero uh, uh, zero uh, a, 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 you know a zero number so as a result thermo power actually picks up the asymmetry of the density of state so it's highly highly you know sensitive to this particle hole asymmetry because the <coughs> energy <coughs> excuse me <coughs> <coughs> So energy higher than chemical potential, basically electron and energy. Okay, I think I have the cartoon picture here. <coughs> so what I was trying to say here, because of this temperature gradient, your Fermi distribution are like this. So you have this excited electron and these holes here. They are now going right. But now what I'm saying, if the density of the material is at this point is symmetric, the thermal power will be zero. But if it is not semi-symmetric or asymmetry, they will give me non-zero thermal power. So which means the thermal power is very sensitive to this particle hole asymmetry we are talking about. So this is the cartoon, you know, some sort of cartoon picture I have kept here for different kind of band structure and how the corresponding thermal power here look like. So this is the graphene band structure, full graphene band structure. You know, this is a, a linear close to the Dirac point. But as you go, there is a band of singularity I was talking about. Now you can ask, what should be the thermal power as I, uh, you know, go around it? So at this point, because it's symmetric, it will be zero. But this side, uh, you know, uh, the, this will give me a one kind of magnitude, a positive. But this side, because we, you know the curvature is different, it will give me a different side. And for again here at this point, it is a symmetric point. It will be another tossing point. So you can see now the symmetric point actually goes to zero, and usually those are the crossing point of thermopower because thermopower usually can be positive or can be negative. So, for example, semiconductor at the gap, you know, when you cross around the gap, it will be zero. But for for hole-like band, it is a positive. For electron-like band, this is a negative. However, if you can imagine, I have a uh, highly particle hole asymmetric band, which is the case for our uh, magic angle sample. So there, you know, uh, uh, is band like this. Now you can see the thermal part doesn't go to zero at this point. How it can have a large magnitude depending on competition between these two. Uh, this. So that is the reason what I was even thermopower is very sensitive to this improving this electron structure. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so, so, uh, so there is a, you might, you know, there is a one more important thing. I have been telling the semi classical equation, which is more original in terms of understanding thermopower. But there is a very, you know, uh, for uh, like experimenters like us, uh, there is a, another way of understanding this, actually the semi-classical equation, you can approximate to call Mott formula in some uh, in limiting case, for example, if the temperature is much smaller than Fermi energy. So in this case, this, this derivative of uh, Fermi distribution function, you can replace by delta function and so on. So uh, you can- uh, the, uh, Yes. Question. So uh, uh, the uh, particle hole asymmetry that you said is there in the twisted system is that due to the stoner transition yes. or is it is it exactly stone because of the stoner transition this is exactly the point i'm going to make it yeah okay yeah that's a i'll show you the data yeah so uh, the, uh good so this is called mod formula so i'll uh, so what is this mod formula this mod formula tells you the derivative of resistance actually will give me my uh thermopower Okay, so this is a limiting case, but most of the metal and semiconductor, this smart form actually valid the derivative of resistance and the signal that sign the thermopower magnitude and its sign is basically uh, related to this. Now you can ask whether this such a interactive and correlation dominated physical case, whether this smart formula valid. Uh, I mean, in the other word, what happened to the stoner like or that phase transition phase, what I was talking about. So, uh, so I have, I guess, 15, uh, 15 minutes. So let me uh, uh, bring to uh, the main experiment. So what do we do here? Let me start again this slide. 
So this is the way. So having said that, you know, all these things, the main important thing is the making the devices for us. And, and making this particular magic angle is very, very challenging. Uh, the way we do it, this is uh, some uh, cartoon way of showing it. So we have some kind of stamp here, as you see, PDMSPC, and uh, uh, we uh, take a single layer graphene and we cut into two pieces and then we make a relative angle between them. And these are uh, encapsulated by boron nitride. So if somebody interested, I can discuss you know, at the end of the talk, uh, but I'll not go to details. Uh, there are lots of uh, techniques. I mean, uh, it's just over the time we have achieved and so on. So, but it takes quite a long time to achieve, you know, uh, particularly to uh, achieve this magic angle. So it's a trial and error. The yield is not that, that high, it's, I would say less than 10%. So out of 10 sample, you will get one sample. Uh, maybe if we, we can discuss what are the difficulties and so on, maybe we can discuss later. So this is the device look like. What you see here, this is the, your twisted, uh, that magic, uh, twisted bilayer graphene. Uh, the color you see from the boronite, this is the boronite encapsulated seed sample. There are two contacts you see here, and there's a heater. So there, I, as I told you, I have to clear the temperature gradient across the sample. So by passing current, this heater basically will create a temperature gradient across the sample, and I can uh, basically uh, measure the, uh, this thing. So this is your, uh, how the uh, actual measurement uh, schematic look like. So this is your twisted binary graphene. As I was telling, they're connected by these two contacts and this heater basically created temperature gradient. So there are two important things you have to measure as I was telling you. What is this voltage difference? Okay, that is very well-known technique to measure this voltage, which you can do by call uh, two omega technique, so which is standard. But the main difficulty is to measure this temperature difference. And this is the technique, what I was telling you, our lab has, uh, you know, we have been in uh, this thermal transport business. So we measure this called thermal. And the thermal noise are proportional to this temperature, you know, uh, this thing. So by measuring this thermal noise, we can, we can accurately measure this temperature difference. In fact, our technique, we can almost measure uh, less than a millikelvin uh, temperature difference between these two contacts. Okay, so these are the two uh, uh, important thing. So this is the response of your device now. So this is the device what I was talking about uh, our, from our group. As you can see, this is your density uh, axis. So this is your uh, Dirac point and this is your resistivity. As you can see at the zero, uh, you have this Dirac point, what you expect from the Dirac point. If you have a single layer graphene, the resistance should have decreases and monotonically it will decrease. It will never have this kind of feature. On the other hand, here you see very funny features happening and they are not symmetric, both the electron and whole side. Uh, most important thing you see first, there is a, another large peak you see at the four electron field. So if I feel by four electron, the moiré itself, you see the large resistance. And that is basically what happened. You have this flat band, but you are basically, you are moving from flat band to higher bands, which is the higher dispersive band. So you are, you are basically crossing through this gap uh, between this flat and dispersive band, and that is your, this one. But important thing, before that, you have many, you know, other feature, which is at integer filling. For example, at one and two, you, you see very nicely there are these peaks. So these are the yeah, interaction physics I was talking about, particularly these two I was explaining in terms of this mod peak and so on. And uh, nevertheless, the left side, you know, this whole side, you see the resistance saturation here because this is a two probe measurement. We don't see resistance zero, but you see some signature of superconductivity. Uh, I, I probably, I'll not get a time, but I will not go to show other details, but uh, we see a signature of superconductivity in this device. Now, what we are doing now, so to for thermal power measurement, we pass a current through heater. So as I pass a current through heater, I measure this voltage and the temperature difference. So these are the two things we simultaneously has been plotted here as a function of heater current. So this is the, your, uh, the thermoelectric voltage generated across the sample. And this is your uh, temperature difference uh, across the sample. So basically if I plot now uh, the thermal power as a function of temperature for different filling or different doping, they look like this. You see like, you know, they are linearly increasing. And the slope of each curve, basically that gives me the Seebeck curves for a particular field. So if I do this exercise for my throughout the band, this like this look like at 10 Kelvin. So this is what I'm showing here. The Seebeck coefficient in terms of micro volt per Kelvin. 
across the my <coughs> tools system. So what what I'm talking about here, the zero again, I say the D. So Dirac point, as I told you, this is a symmetric point. This it goes to zero. But there are many interesting, like almost like textbook kind of data. You see, this goes down, then it goes up again. And again, there are several sign changes. There is an interesting point. This sign changes from this theory, as I told you, it has to be at the symmetric point. And that symmetric point is 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5 and plus 0 0.5. That should have been at here, but rather we see somewhere close to 0 0.3. So that itself is very interesting physics, which I probably don't get a time to uh, this thing. But let's see uh, what happened to uh, this this thermocol uh, spectrum. Now, as it cool down, now what uh, this sir, be, yes, sir. In the last slide in uh, V two omega versus uh, delta t, what are the different graphs in uh, means? What are these parameters? 1.07 these things. Ha, ha, ha. So this one, uh, these are the different density actually, different okay. film. So okay, let's okay. say my gate voltage is fixed here. Okay. I, at this point, I'm measuring uh, my thermoelectric voltage and temperature difference. And so this is done by back gate or uh, universal this is back gate. Okay. This okay. Is back gate, yeah. okay. Right. But this is in a reduced density in terms of moire filling I have plotted. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So then the slope, the slope of each curve is plotted here. So, which means that every point we have this data as age density. And then we plot the slope of the slope of each curve is nothing but the civic curves. Okay. Okay. So now let's see what happens if I cool down. So there is a dramatic thing happening. I, I hope. Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, no second continue. Yeah. So you see, there are some this is the curve, this is the main heart of the main result here. What I just uh, so you see now at seven Kelvin again almost there is a uh, similar structure, uh, but near this uh, half filling, half filling. Remember half filling with two electron per moire unit. So that I'm calling a half filling because these nomenclature are different and different uh, paper and textbook. So here from this Dirac point to this one is you need a four electron. Similarly, this uh, Dirac point to valency band also four electrons. So total eight electrons required to uh, you know to move from this point to other point so i'm calling this is plus four and this is minus four that's the conventional nomenclature to be used and this point particularly which is i'm calling half filling uh, which is uh, nothing but two electron per moles it's happening seven kelvin you see there is a small harm is coming if i go uh, decrease further five kelvin the peak is even increasing and two Kelvin even more, one Kelvin is dramatic, you know, it's quite large around that point. So not only at that at uh, two electron power filling, even at one electron power filling, also the peak are appearing. Even the three electron filling is, although it's not very clean, but this is also appearing. Further, if I lower it down, although, you know, electron, a whole side is not, uh, it's not exactly like the electron side you see response, even at the Dirac point, you see very, very fascinating, you know, at that point also, you see a uh, uh, single, uh, uh, you know, this thermopar gives you a peak and this magnitude, if I look at the magnitude, so what is the important message I'm trying to say this plot? That at each integer filling, you see a large thermopar peak, like including one, two, three, you see a large thermopar peak. And just to, just to give a feeling for the dispersive band, which is above this or below this, you see thermopore almost goes to zero, which is expected such a low, step, low temperature. Okay, so these are uh, dispersive band around that point, thermopore almost zero. But in the flat band around this integer field, large value, which is close to 100 microvolt per Kelvin, which is 100 times or even uh, more than that than the graphene at this temperature. If you compare to power factor, this is actually two orders of magnitude then higher than any material exists at such a low temperature. Okay, so that's okay. So that is, uh, I mean, in terms of sort of technology or something, although it's a very low temperature, uh, this high value, I don't know how it will be useful for practical application. But, uh, but you know, some maybe some cryo free or something people can think of, something can be used. But nevertheless, in physics wise, is very interesting that something dramatically happening thermopore. Now you try to ask, what is my expectation from my 
as I was telling that mod formula I was talking, what is my expectation? If I look at the, I told you the mod formula that goes as derivative of resistance. And if you remember, resistance has a peak at this point, like it is a neutral, uh, your direct point at integer filling, you have this resistance peak. If I took a derivative of that, it will give me a crossing impact. In fact, at the integer filling, these are integer filling, I should see a zero thermocore. <coughs> so the blue line is your derivative of resistance and the red is your, uh, the major thermocore. You see there is a huge difference between the mod formula and the measure. So this is a, you can see the immediately the violation of uh, mod formula in the system. And in fact, that survived even up to 10 Kelvin. So the blue again, derivative of resistance, you have seen many crossing around the zero line, but from thermocore, you see only one cross. So clearly mod formula doesn't matter, okay? Not only that, if I look at the, the thermocore magnitude as a function of temperature, like here I have measured 0.1 Kelvin to 10 Kelvin, you can see, it is increasing at the beginning monotonically. There is a peak and decreasing. This you cannot explain again by mod formula because mod formula, as you know, it goes as temperature, linear temperature. So that again establishes this is a complete the, the physics, the approximate limit. What we know this mod formula for conventional metal semiconductor, it doesn't valid here. And so then what we try to Sir, we ask ourselves, yes. And in the last two last line, previous, previous one. This one and uh, uh, this one. So yes. uh, in the electron and hole side, why the uh, features are not uh, like uh, comparable? They're not symmetric. As I told you, there is a. If you look at our element also, they are not symmetric. And not only that, this feature is coming because of super. So there is a superconductivity around this area. Okay. So these features coming from superconductivity. So in twisted, this magic angle sample, superconductivity doesn't appear for both sides. It's only appear only at only one side. And God only knows, nobody knows exactly. Uh, maybe some theory guy can tell me, but at least I don't understand why it happened. But the fact is that is always comes this side, the whole side. Okay. okay. The superconductivity. So this is the signature, but you can ask, yes, okay, here maybe superconductivity appearing, the physics are different. But even above that, when there is no superconductivity, this side you see a peak, this side you don't see. What I'll show you, what I'll tell you that it is no, the stoner, because this peak at the end, I will show you that because of the stoner transition happening, the cascaded physics I was talking about, it turns out again, the electron side, it's much more stronger than the whole side. So basically stoner transitions are very weak for the whole side. Okay. So that is the reason it's not uh, uh, seen for the whole side. And another uh, small feature is uh, below 0.5 in the positive side, there is a small feature at below 1K temperature, but it is not there in the uh, above 2K, this, uh, this. Which one you're talking below about? Below 0.5, below positive 0.5, the small feature. Uh, which one, this one? No, no, left to that. The left of that. Ah, uh, this one. Ah, uh -huh, this one. Ah, this is the I was calling. Okay, sorry, I, I, I again, I actually, I should have taken. So I'll try, sorry, this is your Dirac point, right? Yeah. So this one mean four electron here. This is four electron. Yeah. 0.5 mean two electron filling. Okay. And this is exactly, this is one electron filling. Okay, okay, okay. So this, so this is good that you ask. I, 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 so let me clarify. Actually, this is your one electron filling. This is your two electron. This is around three electron and this is your four electron. Okay. So this is different, uh, I, I probably am not consistent throughout. So uh, so this, this, is, this is the integer filling. In fact, this is one in, uh, first integer of electron. This is second integer filling. This is the third around and so on. And uh, this peak is uh, 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 prominent after uh, below this one K. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, okay, that's exactly means why it is happening. So now before I go to the last theory slide, uh, I'll try to show what happened other than magic angle. So this is like now uh, 1.66 and 0.35. And there you can see at least the sign chain, the derivative of resistance and the major thermocore, they are more or less, you know, the sciences are more or less from the mod formula. 
So what we are saying that you know, and also if you look at as a function of temperature, they goes pretty linear with the temperature. Uh, temperature. So the, what I'm trying to uh, give a message from this that this uh, this this, this non-magic angle sample, they are more or less follows the mod formula. On the other hand, that uh, previous slide, this magic angle sample, the mod formula violate both way, like derivative of resistance doesn't follow, as well as temperature dependence is quite dramatic. So now let's try to understand what is what is the physics, what is going on actually. So this is our theory colleague, uh, Sumila Subrata and Adhip, what we have calculated. So what the picture shows, so we start from this Dirac point. Let's ask what happened. At the Dirac point I'm starting. So at the Dirac point, as I told you, there are four, this Dirac code, uh, basically, you can simply you can think like four Dirac code or four flavor. So here, up to the Dirac code, you see the rates are filled. Okay, so up to the Dirac codes are completely filled, and above that, these are completely empty. Now, what happened? You try to dope the system, and uh, by the way, the 0 0.25 meaning is one electron filling, 0 0.45 meaning is two electron, 0 0.75 meaning three electron filling, and one meaning four electron. So now what happened, once you start filling the electron here, at the beginning, this is at this, this y-axis, the occupancy of this, you know, what is happening. Now at the beginning, all of them equally, pop, the electrons are populated equally in this four flavor. But as I approach close to this one electron filling, suddenly one of the flavor become completely filled, this direct Dirac code become completely filled and other three become completely empty. So that is the thing has been shown here. You can see this occupation was suddenly from here, one of them goes up. On the other hand, three of them come to zero. So this is the stoner like transition I was talking about. And the non rigid band. The band rates are keep changing as you, you know, uh, as you uh, tune the, uh, as you do the system. Similarly, as you again further increase, close to this filling, Again, two of them feel completely, other two become completely empty. So two of them become completely empty and other one, uh, you know, like this. So this goes on, like, you know, this every integer feeling. So as a result, your density, your, the feeling goes like this, such a dramatic way. If you calculate our density of state, which I was telling you, very rigid density of state like this, from G, okay, this is a zero to one I was plotting, you know, this I was talking about for the conduction band. So this was the rigid band that the continuum model will give me, but now this Hartripo calculation is giving me this kind of actual density of state with the doping. So it is not like that. It goes like this. The density of suddenly increases, again drop, it increases like this. So that is the very dramatic. So as you can see, this 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 malleable Fermi surface or this stoner like transition at integer filling is making the band structure sort of, you know, uh, uh, keep uh, this tra tra transition around this integer uh, and this integer. And this is the, th they have calculated using uh, uh, their, uh, this Kubo formula and so on, uh, this thermal power. And uh, what they found that indeed, this theory gives me, I mean, again, this doesn't capture quantitatively, but qualitatively this peak, you know, th these are the thermal power peak. And these are the thermal power for two cases, you can see here, the blue solid blue line is the non-interacting case. Uh, this the dot with the line is uh, your uh, uh, for the this uh, this this uh, cascaded uh, uh, this stoner like transition case. And you can see here an integer filling uh, is sort of I mean giving you a glimpse that you know they are able to capture this thermal power. So we believe this is the physics happening. And in fact, the, theoretically, if you do the thermal power as a function of temperature. It gives you this non-monotonic temperature difference, a eh, 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 non-monotonic temperature dependence with the temperature. Okay, so this sort of qualitatively, I would say, captures the essence of our work. So let uh, this talk saying that you know what we have, uh, what I try to try to give you a sort of uh, this how the magic angle twisted violet the field had in importance and how our thermal power could you know recognize. Uh, or uh, this anomalous thermal power response is important to show this, you know, this uh, the, the, the this stoner like transition at integer uh, filling. And because of that, actually, bec and uh, because of this particle rule asymmetry, I, I didn't tell you this particle. So the particle rule asymmetry, because of this, you see the slopes are different. So this side is, uh, it falls quite rapidly, then this, uh, so this side, so there is a particle rule asymmetry. So because of that, the thermal power 
uh, peak was appearing. Okay, so and of course it shows a very, uh, I mean, a very nice example of uh, the mort violation and so on. Uh, and uh, I think I'll stop here. Thank you very much for your attention. And please, uh, yeah, now is open for questions. You can, yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, uh, in that slide where you mentioned that you can change the density of slate, uh, states of uh, the four different flavors uh, individually. Uh, is this this slide? No, no. This is a lot earlier, I think, uh, around 15 or something. Experimental slide or, oh, ha, 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 cartoon picture. Yeah, yes. cartoon picture, yes, yes. You tune the formula, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This so, one, okay. uh -huh. so experimentally, how? Uh, yeah. So these uh, four are for four different flavors, four different density of states. Yeah. So, uh, so if I suppose I want to change one specific uh, kind of flavor, keeping others constant. So experimentally, how do you, how we do so that? That you cannot do. So that's the whole. That's the point I was. That you can't do. So when you do that, everything should supposed to populate equally, right? Yeah, yeah. But because of the interaction, you know, because of this interaction, one of them, uh, you know, somehow energetically favorable compared to others. Okay, okay. So that is the happen, you know, during that integer filling. So one of them energetically be become favorable and that gets filled up, others become completely empty. Okay. So that is the whole point here. So you cannot do, you cannot design experimentally, but because of this self-consistent thing, you know, because of this interaction as you go close to one feeling one, so they are automatically happening. Okay. But I cannot tell you which flavor gets, you know, uh, fast populated and so on. That I, I, I cannot. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask. No, that I don't know. That I cannot know. I mean, I don't have a technique unless you have some, uh, yeah, it's not an easy thing how to prove that uh, what kind of flavor because Hali is very difficult to, uh, but I think th theoretically it's known. I think uh, um, I'm not sure whether it gets past valley and then spin. I'm not sure. I have to see. But theoretically, I think these are these theories are known. Which one gets populated and so on and so on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Anandu, are these John bands? Are these associated with some Hall response? Uh, say again, Sijit. Uh, are these churn bands, uh, uh, would, uh, you know, um, when one of them is occupied, does it have a hall response? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this guy, uh, I mean, uh, this sample doesn't show very nice uh, hall, but people have seen this guy, for, for example, here. You see my slide? Yeah, yeah. They see yeah, yeah. comprised. Yeah. But, so in, but in your experiment, when one of the after one stoner transition, if you had measured, uh, you would have gotten this. Yeah, so else. we have not, because uh, this was two pro measurement, but our device was not that clean to see its own number uh, in hmm. this uh, this thing. But having said that, see, there is a catch. You know, all this charmband, what you see at large magnetic field. Like I oh. did discuss, so you have to, because what happens, there are symmetry, they have an opposite charm number. So the, so the thing is, unless you break some symmetry, you cannot see, you know, result in effect. Hmm. Okay. Because there are two valley which has an opposite, opposite chart number. So what happens at the result, the result is zero. So you have to somehow break this symmetry. Okay, you put and, different chemical potential. Uh, either you put a different chemical potential or either you put a boronitrin potential, you know, yeah, the inversion symmetry. For example, if you align with boronitrite, you can break the inversion symmetry. Or they usually they do this magnetic field. So you break this time differential symmetry, but you can ask why do I need such a large magnetic field? Because uh, these questions are not answered because in principle, uh, I mean, if you can break this C2G, C2G, C2G symmetry at zero magnetic field, you are uh, you can see this uh, whole response, but that has not been seen yet. In your sample, boron nitrate you symmetrically put the gate potential change the density yeah we have a gate potential but what i'm saying our sample i don't know whether we have breaking this c2g uh, so it's not my displacement field i i think 
they do by this you know this aligning uh, to this boron nitrate structure because you have a boron and nitrogen so because of that you basically break this uh, uh, c2g symmetry I actually had one more question. So uh, you said that there's a particle hole symmetry breaking, but in the expression for the Seebeck coefficient that came, you know, that was a okay, asymmetry in the energy direction. The plot that you showed was for uh, uh, G of E versus N. Uh, you mean the theory plot? Yeah, yeah the theory plot. Yeah, yeah, you are right. So this was the not in energy, but yeah, uh, but you know, they, I mean, this is the actual calculation they have done. I mean, but if you see in energy also what happens, because, so be, okay, well, I'll tell you what has happened. Because you see one of them completely filled, right? Mm -hmm. So that density of state doesn't, you know, that doesn't play any role. Now, the other one become completely empty. Mm -hmm. So because, because once we empty, empty we know, uh, so basically we are moving towards the Dirac point, right? Mm -hmm. So the left, so basically this side, the, so, uh, so the, 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 dens the, 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 uh, the density of state falls quite rapidly. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Then you, you know, there is a gradual increase, you know, there slowly you start feeling. So because of this transition, and this is almost like a, you know, first order phase transition at this point. Uh, so there's almost like a fast order phase transition because this suddenly happened, and uh, and because of that, left side your density of state drops quite rapidly. I mean, the from the uh, around this left energy, on the other right side, after that, your density of state increases quite monotonically. But this is full calculation, CG. I mean, they have taken yeah. this, then, then this is the Kubo formula, whatever result coming from here. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Tony, though, I have a quick question. Sure. Uh, so, I mean, how you are measuring the temperature? You said something using the uh, thermal noise. Uh, which one? The temperature? Yeah, temperature gradient across the yeah. sample because that determines your, I mean, uh, that gives you the thermal power. Right. Right. Okay, so I'll tell you what. So this is the, I, I, which I didn't discuss in details. So what the way we do, so, you know, in the system, let's say there is no temperature difference. You have this uh, uh, everywhere, same temperature, right? Mm -hmm. And you know that thermal noise should be 4 kBTR. Yeah. Now, let's say if I have a now temperature gradient, and let's say it is a linear temperature gradient, a linear temperature profile, you can calculate what will be my resultant thermal noise. Mm. The resultant thermal noise will be, so it will be something like, uh, so this 2 kb, this delta T r plus the background one, which is the previous one, what I was talking, 4 kb TCR, 4 kb TR. So what do you measure this excess noise? So basically what we do, we pass the heating current and let's say when a heater current is zero, we have some background noise, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when I pass in between the heater current, I try to see what is my excess noise of the system. And this excess noise is, the question is how do I measure this noise? Are you asking how do you measure or? Uh, no, no, I mean, I'm asking, I mean, how do you, know that there's the gradient because even if there is some average temperature increase that will also come as you know enhanced uh, thermal noise uh, but average. how to say that it's a gradient right right because the samples are pretty small you know and keeping that uh, you know even so, a small uh, bit okay. of temperature okay. gradient is not that easy no no actually these are three might so these powers are extremely small so I'll tell you this temperature difference, having said that what I was talking about, 100 millikelvin difference. Mm. Uh, so in fact, we did a console also. So if you if you pass a heater here, uh, you can see very nice. Uh, so if I have a slide anyway, so I actually we have done console to see how the mm. temperature profile. 
So, okay, you can ask, well, how do you know the temperature profile is linear or it is a some sublinear or superlinear decay? It turns out the temperature profile is determined mostly by substrate. Yeah. Your silicon, silicon dioxide, and boron nitrate. Actually, boron nitrate. Boron nitrate, yeah. Actually, boron nitrate is determined. So, yeah. boron nitrate plays a big role to determine that uh, this temperature profile. And it turns out uh, from here to here, it's pretty linear. The, the temperature profile. Then calculate as a small, I, you know, small, uh, small, small, you know, you can think like this is like in my, my, you can, you know, a small, uh, small, small part, you can add the noise from the small, small part, mm -hmm. which are in a, some equilibrium temperature, which is variable. And if you do that exercise, you'll get this stuff. So this, this expression, yes, I agree. This is only true for the linear temperature profile. If it is not perfectly linear, this although this linearity will not change, the linearity relation between the thermal noise versus the temperature difference, this will not change. What will change is flow coefficient. Yeah, the coefficient. Yeah, it's ah, only the coefficient you're going to change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But we actually did, uh, I mean, because I'll tell you why linear. I'll tell you that one of our, this heater line is bigger than this size. So this is like a five to six micron. The heater line is quite big. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like a 1D, although a system is like a 2D, but there is no temperature gradient across this, this axis. It's almost along this X axis. So along this, there is uniform temperature. Like the color has been shown. Mm -hmm. So as a result, it's close to very close to like a one dimensional model. And you know, one dimensional model, if you solve temperature if boundary, it will give you linear temperature. The, the, the Fourier's law, if you solve for one dimensional model, it will give you the linear profile. Yeah. So, in uh, heating is kind of fixed. You are applying a fixed current through the heater. Yeah, we are changing from uh, so, so basically, as I can show you this curve. Sorry, yeah. So, here actually, yeah, you can see this is the heater current. So, I'm changing the heater current. Yeah, yeah. but uh, no, what I was uh, saying, like uh, to improve the sensitivity, if you send something like, you know, if you basically kind of oscillate the amplitude of the heating current, will it ah, help absolutely. in improving your detection? Yeah, I completely agree, but the noise technique we use, <laughs> this is uh -huh. something we are limited because this is a high frequency. Uh, so we are, uh, so we don't have, I, we know, we know, I, I completely, I know what you are talking about, but that can be improvised in future because these, these noise we measure at megahertz frequency, by the way. They're not low frequency measurement. This noise I was talking about, uh, there are the megahertz frequency. So there I have a, uh, so, so, but yeah, 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 we can improvise to for this technique. In fact, uh, that will take much, much lesser time to finish the experiment, in fact. And uh, the uh, last question, I mean, uh, yes. is this contact resistance uh, playing any role uh, in your measurement? I mean, do you face very, any problem? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very good question. So I'll tell you first, what is the estimation of contact resistance? From this register data, I can tell you. Look, this is true probe measurement. And you can see when system becomes superconductivity, the lowest resistance is 1.8 kilo. Mm -hmm. So by superconductivity, channel is superconductor. So whatever this resistance coming, they're because of contact resistance. So this, 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 this flat part, of this resistance, give me some estimation. And I'm telling this estimation is contact resistance from my device is around 1.8 kilo, which or roughly two kilo, which means the left contact has a one kilo and the right contact has a one kilo. But if you look at this flat bed resistance, they're much bigger than that, first of all. I mean, they are like, you know, 10 kilo to 100 kilo. So what I'm trying, point I'm making, all these two probe, uh, that this contact is smaller than the channel resistance. And the reason we choose the two probe is for the following reason, because thermal power, if you introduce other contact, the temperature, as we are discussing, the temperature profile will be you know, modified. Yeah, yeah. Because once you put in a metal contact, the temperature profile is no longer linear what we are talking about, what we have assumed and comes from it. We theoretically supported this temperature profile. Actual profile, I don't know what it is, right? But if I connect, you know, kind of this kind of small, small metal, because metal has a large thermal conductivity, what I'll try to, they will try to make very small here complex. So there will be temperature gradient across this and this can complicate this stuff. Yeah. So this is the region we didn't have any choice for thermopower uh, to use this one. 
for having said, okay, so now question is how can it affect? There are two ways it can affect. One is your thermal noise. But thermal noise, the resistance we use and analyze is the total noise, the total resistance. So the two probe resistance, okay? So that has been taken care in the extraction of thermal noise. Now you can ask whether contact can give me some, you know, CBEC, you know, some thermal, right? If somebody can ask yeah. whether this contact. <laughs> Excuse me. I'll tell you not why. Because this, first of all, this contact is, uh, okay, this is of the order of kilo. Now imagine this contact, you know, that we are making this 1D contact, right? Because we etched and it is a 1D contact. So basically the contact is coming something like an interface, uh, just like a single line. Now thermoelectric voltage is proportional to the temperature difference, right? So what I'm trying to say that within such a small length scale, which is like a few angstrom where the contact is coming, the temperature difference is almost close. You know, there is no temperature difference across it. Hmm. Because temperature difference across the sample, you have a temperature difference. This line, they are almost same temperature. Yeah. So the temperature difference is because it's a line, so there is no temperature difference. So it will not give me the voltage. You follow? Yeah. Me? yeah. So, so that's our uh, sort of, uh, um, so um, yeah, I, I mean, there are two ways, I would say the con, I mean, of course we wanted to do, but I think we didn't like it. I mean, this is, we could have done, but because of this uh, simplicity of, uh, you know, temperature profile and all, because otherwise uh, refer will ask much more complication here. And the contact resistance from the experiment, we know is less than two kilo uh, compared to channel resistance is much higher. Right. That is, you cannot, you can ignore. And again, the temperature difference across these interfaces, there is nothing. And thermoelectric voltage, because at the end, you measure the voltage V2 omega throughout the sample. Now you can, you can write in that V2 omega some series combinations coming from the contact, coming from the channel and another contact. Now I'm saying around the, around the, this contact resistance, your temperature difference is almost zero. Right. Because it's a single line. So as a result, that will, give me a very small uh, I mean, negligible amount. Uh, I, okay. We believe that, you know, that probably is not playing a big role here. Okay, Anindo, thank you. It's an excellent talk. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for so much. So, uh, uh, sir, I have one question. Sure, sure, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, the question I have is, due to the symmetry baking, would you observe any valley polarization, optical valley polarization like effect in this twisted bilayer wrappings like that has been observed in uh, other EMDs? Yeah, very good question. But having said the very good question, in principle, why not? But the band I'm talking about, very small energy. Remember, it's a 10 MeV, mm -hmm. right? All these bands are 10 MeV. So your optical, usually optical transition we're talking about is visible range, right? You need something visible range. Right, yes. These are, you need some a EV order. So that opportunity right. is not here. Okay. Because okay. TMD, that's the reason beautiful. You have this, the band gap such that, you know, is in optical range and everything is yes. right, yes. right number. But here the, the total band I'm talking about within 10, 20 MeV. So it's okay. very okay. small okay. energy. It is interesting something in terahertz range, but not in optical range, I would say. Mm -hmm. So my question was uh, uh, on continuation with Atiko slide. Uh, so what is the role of the, uh, I mean, nature of substrate and whether uh, uh, hang, doing it in hanging geometry, what do you expect? Like uh, if you change the substrate or yeah, do it in hanging geometry? Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting question. Now, so you have to see if you have a hanging, so, uh, okay. If you have a hanging geometry, your device quality can improve. That is one thing because yeah. device as a substrate, if your mobility can be improved, even the response, what we see, all these things can improve. So that, uh, but nowadays, you know, probably people don't do hanging geometry rather than they use screening, screening geometry. Like they use some sort of uh, uh, local graphite. You might have heard they called graphite screening. Mm -hmm. Because we have done the silicon dioxide backgating rather than silicon dioxide, you can use the on top of graphite which is okay. like a thick graphene. So if you put on top of graphite, that actually improves the quality of your sample. 
So, so similar to like you know suspended geometry, what you are talking about. Yeah. So that I was wondering, in, with respect to the anomalies, you see what role substrate ha, ha. in that. Right, 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 right. So, so, so it's possible. Okay, now question is hanging geometry. What can do? So hanging. So this uh, hanging or this suspended geometry can bring the quality of my sample better. In that case, I would say the cascading and all this thing will be even much more prominent. Yeah. The symmetry broking because these interactions usually uh, they are uh, uh, they are screened by the substrate. You know, some sort of you know, if you have some substrate, they can or disorder they can you know sort of the I mean if it is a metal it can screen or if it is a disorder they can sort of broaden the effect, right? It's because right. So all this coming because of interaction. But if it is a pristine or maybe more more cleaner, then you will see this effect much more. I would say better cleaner device. You will see this cascaded feature even much more prominently. Okay, yeah. having said that, in the experiment, what we have seen, I told you that we see this effect only below five Kelvin. This cascade, all this you know fancy transition. I was showing the experimental signature. What you see below five Kelvin, above five Kelvin, that signature almost not there. Mm -hmm. So if you have a clean device, you may see much higher temperature. In fact, maybe 20, 30 Kelvin, you will see this. You know. Uh, this transition will start appearing, right? So oh, yes, I mean, they, that will basically. Sorry about that point. Even in the theory calculation, it uh, the it the, the the signature vanishes. Uh, yes, right. Did you tell me again in the theory? Uh, so even in the theory, so just about the point you were making now. So even in the theory calculation, the peaks vanish uh, at high temperatures. Right, that's true. That's okay, true. So, because no, no, but because the ad hoc, the, 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 the ad hoc they put, because they don't know they took some you. The interaction, yeah. they are taking something, they have put, you know, that is nobody knows what is the number. So for example, we did I think uh 1.5 MB, I mean one MB to three MB, right? Mm -hmm. So that I'm saying that number may vary if you have a different substrate. Yeah. So in an actual experiment, it may still continue. It may change, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I interrupted you. No, 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 it's perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, I can continue what uh, she was asking. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, second thing is like this possibility of having these magnetic uh, uh, magnetic layers, like whether this would bring down the uh, this magnetic field upper limit requirement. Like for instance, we work on this uh, magnetic two D layers, quasi two D systems, which are magnetic in nature. So uh, the very high field requirement. I was wondering the symmetry breaking connection by using um, magnetic layers, magnetic 2D uh, layer. If I have a magnetic layer, yeah. and if I proximity, whether that will change my this symmetry breaking stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a very interesting question. Actually, the, so if I have some, so this is like, okay, if I have a magnetic layer, I can think like a, it's like a external magnetic field or some, I mean, something like, uh, external field and but it is a much larger magnitude because it's a proximity right yeah. so yeah some i mean in fact somebody may see very clean as i was telling this if we apply magnetic field you see this charm band right yeah, yeah. and uh, you may see this topology effect much more cleaner way yeah uh, yeah, yeah it may help it may in terms of this, you know, uh, splitting and all, it may help, and you may see this charm signature much more uh, cleaner way because local field can be very high on this magnetic material. Yeah, yeah. that's what was our uh, thinking. Like, uh, uh, so uh, these uh, some of the kitai magnets. Uh, yeah, yeah. Get, yes. So we exfoliated RUCL three. We exfoliated also some other yes. systems. Is uh, a comment rather than I mean, this is one way of. Uh, uh, in this direction. No, no, I completely agree. Even this new RUCL3, that's just even that's the fancy material. You have a lots of other stuff also. Yes, but yes. here are all this 2D magnet, you know, all this. Uh, yeah. here so I getting them in actual 2D form uh, is is the challenge. With, and then the, there's a lot of things, of course. And I, I must say, your talk was very interesting. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed your talk. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Anil. Uh, thanks, Anindo. Anindo, yes. uh, yeah, sorry. Yes. Uh, uh, I have to go to another meeting, so I will. Thanks. Anindo, I have a simple, simple question. Yeah. 
so i think uh, when you are trying to make this you know twisted structure the main problem is the you know the relaxation of this layer on top of another so if uh, you no know, one layer relaxes on top of another do you consider it as a bilayer graphene or how it is difficult uh, different it is from the bilayer graphene see uh, bilayer graphene is very distinct we know bilayer graphene the stacking is ab stacking we know they are uh, we know the meaning of ab stacking right so mm -hmm. um, uh, and the ramon spectra is very unique for ab stacking by there now in this case we have seen you know we as i said the yield is 10% mean we so basically we make all of them 1.1 degree i mean experimentally we try to make 1.1 degree but the outcome is something different sometimes we see two i mean you know, from the trunk like equivalent to 2 degree sometimes when 0.5 degree or some of them is very small shape now so so it's not so basically what have you probably know these are these structures of even having said this a and ab stacking there are many thing goes on the because of the stacking different there are lots of you know strain there are compressive there is a tensile strain in the system you know builds up so uh, you are right they they probably zero zero degree angle probably the most sort of global minima you can think of you know a, that bar, Bilayer graphene, but we have never seen experimentally. So nobody goes exactly zero. So they stuck somehow uh, um, some other angle. And to me, look like these are because not because of some theoretical reason. There might be some disorder or defect or some edges. You know, which edges are not perfect, which restrict them to further uh, you know uh, to you know okay. lubricate or further relax to zero. But I agree with you that zero degrees of uh, AB bundle probably will be the uh global uh, minimum and it'll try to relax to uh, that condition in fact having said that that's the reason we don't do all this pick up very you know very low temp i mean not i mean usually if you know this stamping people do 180 degree something 160 degree we do much 55 which is very difficult to do but that's the temperature we follow because so that it doesn't relax and so on and uh, nowadays people use uh, also wsc2 some tmd so they basically anchor one of the layer by they say because wsc2 lots of disorders and the sulfur vacancies etc so and uh, it is uh, it has a lots of rough surface it turns out if you, if you use a rough surface to pick up they actually helps to hold somehow I see, I see. so this caltech group uh, this is one group they use all the time wsc2 Uh, so they don't use boron nitride. So we are using boron nitride. So they use WSC two, and they uh, uh, sort of uh, anchor. And they are they are saying that because of that rough surface of TMD, it helps to you know uh, it doesn't allow to relax. Yeah. But the uh, so the band gap is uh, less. That is another problem. That property might affect. Right? Yeah. So I think we nobody knows what is yeah. where does it go. Because Raman spectra, it doesn't look like AB stack, even right. other angles. So quite different than AB stack. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I have one uh, question, technical question. So yeah. I wanted to know the details of the transfer process that uh, transfer stage you showed. Uh, right, I can. Okay, so maybe what I can do, I can connect you to uh, this thing, but. Basically, is the same thing what you see in the literature, and I'll tell you there is nothing like you know very secret. It's a PDMS, you know, film. Then you have this PC, PPC film, you know, uh, the standard method, and uh, simple, you know, local. Even we don't have a very fancy system. We all homemade system because I didn't have a funding to buy all this fancy stuff. All this homemade, just Olympus three lakhs microscope, few objectives. And then you have this uh, some X Y Z stage for this manipulator, okay? And uh, all these you know PDMS PC, and then you optimize. So uh, I don't think very uh, there is any secret, but he, of course if you want to know, I can share with you. Uh, maybe you can write a email. I can you know talk to my. I mean we can I can you know I can keep you loop in my student and they can share with you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. But I think here I think main point Tamagna I would like to say. Rather than recipe, is the important is the patience here. This field, particularly the twisted business, the patience is the most important because outcome is very low. Yeah. That I seem to make uh, for because 
if you want to do twist tmd business it's good because tmd is one good thing is you don't need to, there is no magic angle even even two to five degree you have you know almost flat band or whatever pieces but graphic because you need to uh you know that magic around 1.1 degree you at least if you want to study the magic angle but of course there are uh lots of interesting physics like uh marginally you know twisted you know small angle stuff and so on so there are uh, many interesting uh, things that we can do okay tamagna i have to also leave a nice meeting you guys and uh, yeah i'll stop here okay no, you are muted yeah thank you for this talk uh, this was a very nice talk thank you very much yeah. thank you very much okay so if there is no other question i'll uh, thank you professor das for this talk and I'd like to end this meeting for today thank you very much sir okay thank you bye bye see you all. okay bye thank you